Well, this one was a surprise. The Morphine M8 is another mini PC with Intel's latest Alder Lake N budget processors, and it shares a lot of similarities with the M9. So let's go over them quickly. The shape and ports are identical, but the M8 is plastic instead of metal. Features the Intel N95 CPU instead of the N100, Wi-Fi 5 instead of 6, and has a lower price point compared to 195 for the M9. I would have liked to see a cheaper pre-build option available with half the RAM and storage, but the lowest is 16 slash 500 gigabytes. In the box you'll find a nice small power supply, HDMI, monitor mount, and manual. Windows 11 Pro is provided with the pre-build, but Ubuntu worked off the USB stick just fine. Even though it's plastic, build quality is solid, and it feels pretty good. Ports haven't changed over the M9. The front has two USB 3 10 gigabit, and the power button. The back has a barrel jack power input, audio jack, dual HDMI 2.0, 2.5 gigabit LAN, and another dual USB 3 10 gigabit. Opening it up is pretty easy. Four exposed screws, and then pry the lid open with something. Okay, a Kyoxia drive is included with this free sample sent to me by Morphine. Underneath it is the Wi-Fi Bluetooth card and the CMOS battery. You can also add a 2242 M.2 SATA drive for extra storage. All the Lake N chips only support single channel memory, and the included RAM here is 32GB of 3200 DDR4. All the Lake N chips can be configured at different power limits, which greatly affects performance. The Morphine M8 has a power limit 1 of 15 watts and PL2 of 25 watts. These options aren't available to change in the BIOS, but the Mini still provided some interesting results. When it comes to single core Cinebench, the M8 performs almost the same as the B-Link Mini S12 with the same CPU. However, pushing the power limit to 30 watts on the B-Link placed it almost 7% faster. While the M8 fell behind a bit there, in multi-core, it matched the B-Link Mini S12 at the 30 watt rating. That being said, both Minis are behind the top N100 units. In video encoding, the Morphine M8 almost matched the M9 and beat the B-Link Mini S12 by 3%. The biggest surprise came from the 3D Mark results. 15% ahead of the B-Link in DX11 and 10% in DX12. In 3D Mark, it looks like the N95 isn't far off the N100 even though it has only two thirds of the EUs. But is that actually the case? Before we put it to the test with gaming workloads, let's check out AV1 video playback. After the initial drop of frames when pressing play, 4K 60fps using YouTube playback without any more drops. So both the N95 and N100 are good to go. Okay, now for the game tests starting with the eSports title Valorant. Based on this comparison, the M8 performed a bit worse. In any case, I wouldn't recommend playing Valorant on an N95 CPU. The N100 is the absolute lowest cutoff point in my opinion. One enemy remaining. Out of charges. I didn't test League of Legends on the B-Link N95, but here is the M8 versus the M9. The gap in frame rate isn't as large as you'd expect, around 10% on average. With PS2 emulation, the extra GPU power from the Morphine M8 is on display. Again, around 10% behind the M9, and the B-Link S12 much further behind. In Need for Speed Most Wanted, I can't see much difference between the minis. The M8 is clearly faster than the B-Link S12 with Mario Kart Wii. None of the minis hit full speed. Okay, so it seems 3D Mark was mostly accurate. This box has faster graphics performance than the N95 found in the B-Link S12. But how is that possible? Well, 
While I didn't find any option to push graphics further on the B-Link S12, the Morphine M8 gets there with brute force. It might have less EUs, but it also chugged the most power at peak to make up for it. Idle power draw was also up. All the older Lake N minis seem to idle higher than the previous generation, and this one is no exception. Cooling is good, with the CPU maxing out at 78C, even with a higher power draw. SSD temp on the other hand was worse than the M9, likely because of the plastic shell. There's no cooling at all and the SSD struggled. It affected write speeds and Crystal Disk Mark kept bringing back these slow throttled sequential write figures. For a PCIe Gen 3 X2 slot, it's not doing well and needs a heatsink. Noise levels are up over the M9. Not bad, but definitely noticeable when under load. So the Morphine M8 has better graphics performance than expected. The CPU runs cool. It's good to see dual M.2 on a budget mini and 2.5 gigabit LAN. However, for a 30 US dollar reduction, you get the lower end CPU, plastic case, and older Wi-Fi chip, which makes the M9 the more attractive option. It also needs some cooling on the SSDs as temps are just too high. Overall, the Morphine M8 is a decent option, and the best N95 performer in graphics so far, but it has its issues. Are you interested in this mini PC? Let me know in the comments, and see you next time. Cheers!